Look at 2 Corinthians 7. These are the kind of people that are out there, though. That's right. <laughs> now, this is, this is uh, the last one, okay, that people try to bring up to me, that godly sorrow worketh repentance. And they'll use 2 Corinthians 7 as a proof text because it talks about repentance for salvation, okay? And they love this portion of Scripture because to them it's just like, man, it's like a checkmate. But here's the thing, folks. Don't get nervous anytime someone brings up a scripture you just don't understand because it has certain words that seem to back up their point or a proof text. All you have to do is just read it yep. and, and focus on the parts that they're not focusing on. Right. Look at the aspects of the, of the verse that they're not really talking about because there's a reason they're not talking about it because they're natural men who understand not the things of the Spirit of God. Right. Verse 8 says, For though I made you sorry with the letter, let's start with verse 8, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle had made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrow to repentance, for you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us and nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. I mean, case closed. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh Death, the Bible says. Okay, man, you beat me. <laughs> you, you found me out. You got me. Godly sorrow, work of repentance, to salvation, case closed. I mean, what are we going to say after that? They got us. Well, let's break it down, okay? So let me explain what's going on here in 2 Corinthians 7. Obviously, we understand that in 1 Corinthians, the, one of the major issues that Paul the Apostle was dealing with was what? Fornication. Fornication. The man committing fornication, and he addresses it in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And in 1 Corinthians 4, he's basically telling them, do I need to come to you with a rod? He's basically saying, like, do I need to go over there and just let you guys have it and just punish you and chastise you as a spiritual leader? Because you don't seem to be, like, getting this right. Why? Because they were allowing fornication in the church, not so much as is named among the Gentiles, and they were glorying it. They weren't doing anything about it. So he's reproving them. He's rebuking them. They're not casting this guy out of the church. Well, finally, after that first letter, the church of Corinth is like, you know what? We should just like get right with God and cast this guy out. And, you know, Paul's right. So what happens? They cast him out. But now they're going on the opposite side of the spectrum. Because now the guy who was committing fornication... He's getting right with God. He stopped fornicating. He's getting right with God. But now they still don't want to let him into the church, even though he got right with God. So now Paul has to come back and tell them, like, hey, you guys are taking this a little too far. You need to, like, get right, and you need to allow him to come back and love him and confirm your love towards him. Don't be bitter against him. So he's basically went from one opposite end to the other. I mean, that, that's what they did, right? They're like, no, we're going to keep him, even though he's fornicating. And then they're like, oh, man, this is bad. Cast him out. And then he gets right, and they're just like, no, he's not allowed to come back. It's like, you're going to extreme. You don't have a balance. Amen. So you understand what's taking place here, right? 1 Corinthians, dealing with the fornicator. They cast him out. 2 Corinthians, Paul the Apostle is trying to admonish him to allow a repentant brother to come back into the fold. Okay? So let's read it again with that in mind. Verse 8. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent. Let's break this down. He says, I made you sorry. In other words, they felt bad. Yeah. Right? And he's like, I don't repent of that. Oh, wait a minute. Though I did repent. Look at that. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. So the letter that was sent to them made them feel sorry. And in fact, the Bible says in verse 10, that that godly sorrow worketh, worked repentance to salvation. Now look, folks, if this is referring to eternal life, then this is weird. Yeah. Why? Because why is Paul the Apostle saying, now I repent, though, that I gave you that letter? Because if the letter moved them to repent for salvation, then we got an issue because Paul the Apostle literally said in verse number 8, for though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. So, Paul, are you saying that you're, you're, you felt bad that you like gave them this letter and they, they, got, they repented of their sin for salvation? Yep. Right? Yeah. 
In other words, according to their interpretation, because they believe this salvation is referring to eternal life, well, the Apostle Paul feels bad that they got saved. <laughs> He's like, man, why did I... He's like Jonah. <laughs> right? He's like, I was hoping you guys get destroyed. <laughs> like, I wrote that letter, and I was like, yes, yeah, I'm going to get them on this one. And he sent it off. He's like, and then, and then, you know, he didn't repent. But then afterwards, he's like, oh, man, they're going to get saved if they read that, though. They're going to get eternal life if they read that, though. <laughs> Crap. You know, it's just like, what did I do? That's what it's saying according to their interpretation. Because they received the letter, they're like, oh, man. And then they, the whole church got saved. And according to verse 8, Paul repented of that. He's like, stink, they all got saved. Now I'm really going to look like a big-time like apostle now. I was trying to be humble here and, like, you know, not make it look like I, I'm doing too much. Now it's really going to look like I'm just like a superstar apostle, like Manly Perry says. And here's the thing, if, if, that, if it's talking about salvation, then it's, this is really weird. Because he's saying that the whole church got saved. So are you trying to tell me that the entire church of Corinth was not saved? <laughs> then you got a problem because in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he addresses them as being saints. So is he, you know, look at 1 Corinthians 1. Paul, verse 1, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, or, or excuse me, the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Oh, there goes that phrase again, call upon the name of the Lord. So he's addressing saints, he's addressing people who are calling upon the name of the Lord, but yet he regrets sending that letter because now... He's going to get them saved for sure. Can, you, can we explain? It's like when people want to use, want to say that baptism saves, and then we see what? What does Paul the Apostle say in 2 Corinthians? He says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Right. Right. I asked someone that the other day. I'm like, is baptism the gospel? And he didn't say anything for a very long time. Right. He's like, he repented <laughs> at that point. And he says, well, it's in the gospel. It's in the gospel. I said, what did Paul say that, you know, uh, Christ sent them not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. The implication being there that baptism is not the gospel. How can baptism be in the gospel if the apostle Paul is literally saying, I didn't come to baptize. I came to you to preach the gospel. You know, his comment should be like, uh, Paul, the baptism is in the gospel. I'll tell you why, because they're not the same thing. That's right. Amen. But so according to them, repenting of sin for salvation is necessary because of 2 Corinthians 7. Well, then Paul the Apostle is just a wicked person now, isn't he? Because he was so disheartened and angry over the fact that he sent the letter and it got them right. It, it got them saved. And according to them, the whole church wasn't saved. Verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. Now let me ask you a question. Can unsaved people have godly repentance? How can an unsaved person be godly? Because according to them, again, it's referring to salvation. It's referring to repenting of your sins. So can an unsaved person have any kind of godliness? No, they can't. Right? Because they don't have God. So how can they have godly sorrow that works them to repentance? It's not possible. Right. Why? Because they're natural men that receive not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can they know them for the spiritually discerned. He says in verse 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. I'll tell you what the real interpretation of this verse is. He sent them a letter that made them feel bad for what they did. And what did they do? They repented of their actions because they knew Paul the Apostles was going to come with a rod. That's why. Yep. That's why. And in fact, verse 9 says this, Now I rejoice not that you are made sorry, 
but that ye sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner. Look what it says. That ye might receive damage by us and nothing. They're like, before Paul comes, we need to make sure this guy comes back. You know, because uh, he's going to damage us. What does it mean to damage? He, he's coming with the rod. Paul the apostle was on his way to chastise the church at Corinth to rebuke them for being so arrogant and prideful and unloving and not having compassion towards his brother who got right with God. So what were they saved from? Paul's wrath. <laughs> Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. And he says this, not to be repented of. So what is he saying? He's like, look, Godly sorrow worketh repentance and don't turn back from this decision you're making here. Right. Don't repent of this decision. Okay? But sorrow of the world worketh death. Verse 11, For behold, the selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation. Isn't that interesting? One of the fruits of them repenting is them clearing themselves. Wait a minute, I thought repenting was clearing yourself. So how can they say, oh yeah, you guys repented of all your sins, you know, you got saved, and now you're clearing yourselves. Well, what do you mean? I already cleared myself in the, in the first step. I'll tell you why. Because this is not referring to repenting of your sins for salvation. That's 